and welcome to today's Key Stage 3 Literacy Session. The first part of this session, we are looking at semicolons. This is a higher level punctuation mark to use. People find it very, very difficult, even adults in society today. Um, so it is quite rare to find them used correctly. So last week we looked at colons and this week we're looking at semicolons. Now, a semicolon can be used to separate main clauses in a compound sentence. So a sentence that has got and or but in. It often replaces the and or the but. Now the semicolon is useful as it can help to maintain the theme of a sentence. It can avoid abrupt short sentences and it can avoid too much use of and or but. So semicolons can also be used to punctuate lists of long items instead of commas. So if I said to you, I went to the shop and bought some butter, pizza and Diet Coke, we'd have butter, comma, pizza and Diet Coke. But if you've got a long list of items that are very detailed, that's when you'd use the semicolons instead of commas. So let's have a go at the next task. So let's have a look at the first one. Plenty of girls had signed up for the team. Miss Jukes wanted to be one of them. So you've got to look at the way that I've said the sentence there and think about if you would replace an and or a but. So look at the sentence again. Plenty of girls had signed up for the team. Miss Jukes wanted to be one of them. OK, the second sentence. Mr Daly won the ball in the penalty area. He turned quickly, almost losing control. So are there sentences there where you would have put and and but? If there were, you'd put the semicolon where you would have placed that word. And then finally, the last one, Mrs Flowers' briefcase contained a letter to her MP, an empty box of Thornton's chocolates, three poems about her holiday and a study of Macbeth. So where you've got extra information in the list, you'll use the semicolon then. So I want you to pause where you are, I want you to use your exercise books and I want you to write out the sentences, placing the semicolon where you think it needs to be. OK, if you pause this now and then we'll go on to the answers in a minute. OK, so let's have a look at the next bit um, and the answers. So plenty of girls had signed up for the team and Miss Jukes wanted to be one of them. So instead of using the and, you use the semicolon. Mr Daly won the ball in the penalty area, but he turned quickly, almost losing control. So instead of using the but, we use the semicolon. And then finally, Miss Flower's briefcase contained a letter to MP, an empty box of Thornton's chocolates, three poems about a holiday and a study of Macbeth. So where we would have used the commas previously to separate the list, we've used the semicolons instead because they are more detailed. I hope that makes sense. OK, so moving on now and we're looking at brackets. OK, so brackets are a very common way of adding extra information to a sentence. So you use the brackets around a word or phrase, but it still allows the rest of the sentence to make sense on its own. So let's have a look at the first one. Charles Dickens, 1812 to 1870, was the most popular author of the Victorian era. Number two, Stephen Gerrard, captain, was man of the match against Napoli. Number three, our school, the Edge Academy, got its best ever exam results in August 2020. And then finally, Steve, my best friend, has just moved to Scotland. We often call when we add in extra information into a sentence, we say um, we put it in parentheses. You can actually use brackets, commas or dashes. So if you go back, what you will find if we look at the very first one. So Charles Dickens, 1812 to 1870, was the most popular author of the Victorian era. If we put the brackets around 1812 to 1870, the sentence would have still made sense on its own. Charles Dickens was the most popular author of the Victorian era. So when you use the brackets, it will still make the rest of the sentence make sense. OK, can you pause this part of the clip here? I want you to write the sentences out using the brackets and then we'll go on to the answers. OK, so there. There you go. So the information there. So if we looked at Stephen Gerrard was man of the match against Napoli. If you use captain, you put it in the brackets so that it still makes sense. Our school got its best ever 
um, exam results in August 2020. Again, you can see the Edge Academy is in parentheses in brackets, but it still makes sense. And then finally, Steve has just moved to Scotland. Who's Steve? My best friend. OK, I hope that makes sense, guys, and it isn't as difficult as what you think. Using this extra use of punctuation marks will gain you higher levels. OK, we're now moving on to the definition. So I want you to find the definitions of these words. So the first one is defiant. The second is reliant. The third, observant. The fourth, arrogant. The fifth, resistant. The sixth, extravagant. The seventh, significant. The eighth, manifestation. The ninth, abhorrent. And number 10, elegant. Now, if you look at the words there, there are only two of them that do not fit the, um, the pattern of the spelling. So all of these words end in ant, defiant, reliant, observant, arrogant, resistant, extravagant, significant and elegant. They all end in A-N-T. Now, it may sound like ent, E-N-T, but you need to learn that they are A-N-T. So what I'd like you to do is pause it here using Google search engine or, or using a dictionary. I would like you to find the definitions of these words. OK, so let's have a look at the answers. So defiant. If you say that someone is defiant, you mean they show aggression or independence by refusing to obey someone. Number two, reliant. If you are reliant on a person or a thing, it means that um, somebody or something needs it and often can't live or work without it. Number three, observant. Someone who is observant pays a lot of attention to things and notices more about them than most people do. Arrogant. Someone who is arrogant behaves in a proud and pleasant way towards other people because they believe that they are more important or better than others. Resistant. Someone who is resistant to something is opposed to it and wants to prevent it. Number six, extravagant. Someone who is extravagant spends more money than they can afford or uses more of something that is reasonable. Number seven, significant. A significant amount or effect is large enough to be important or affect a situation to a noticeable degree. Manifestation. A manifestation of something is one of the different ways in which it can appear. So if we say it manifested itself in, it means that it's a different way in which it could happen or appear. Number nine, abhorrent. If something is abhorrent to you, you hate it very much or consider it completely unacceptable. So if somebody has hit somebody else, for example, we might say your behaviour was abhorrent. It means we hated it. And then the last one, elegant. If you describe a personal thing as elegant, you mean they are pleasing and graceful. So it's like if they're petite or tiny, it's small, it's graceful. OK, so well done. OK, moving on to the next slide. So today's word of the day is inspiration. Are you an inspiration to somebody? So I want you again using a Google search engine or using a dictionary to find out the meaning of the word inspiration, synonyms, words which are similar to inspiration, antonyms, the words that are opposite to inspiration. And then I would like you to write a sentence with inspiration in it. So please do pause this clip here and then we will move on. OK, so inspiration. The meaning of inspiration is a feeling of enthusiasm you get from someone or something which gives you new and creative ideas. So if you inspire me to do something, it's because um, you've given me enthusiasm because of what you've said or what you have done. OK, so synonyms, so words that are similar to inspiration are to influence, to give an incentive, to give an insight or to motivate. But antonyms, words that are opposite, could mean that the views that you're giving are depressing, it's a hindrance or you're discouraging me. Now, sentences with the word inspiration in are my father was a great inspiration or 
Nelson Mandela's unusual journey to becoming president is an inspiration to millions. If you do want to look up that inspiration as to why, and um, that information as to why Nelson Mandela's journey was unusual, please feel free to Google it or look it up. OK, moving on. So we're looking a little bit more into our tier one to tier two vocabulary. So obviously to develop our vocabulary, we want to use the inspiration, word inspiration, and it just means to give you ideas. So if we start on the left hand side, who is the most inspirational to you? A doctor, a soldier or a teacher? And I want you to talk to somebody at home or I want you to think about which person that would be out of those three or why. Now, the word inspiration is a noun and it says here the process of being mentally stimulated to do or to feel something, especially to do something creative. It could also mean a suddenly brilliant or timely idea. <gasps> then I had an inspiration. So what is the meaning of inspiration to you? OK, so what does it mean to inspire? Apologise about the error there. OK, so inspire means to excite, to encourage or breathe life into something. It comes from the Latin word that means to inflame or to blow up. And when you inspire something, it is if you are blowing air over a low flame to make it grow. So a film can be inspired by a true story. So let's keep going. If we have a look at other examples of the noun inspiration. So the idea came to her in a flash of inspiration. What was your inspiration for the new designs? The artist took his inspiration from African art. In the 1990s, he turned to Brazilian music for inspiration, or she has been an inspiration to all of us. Now, as you can see there by the dinosaur down there, there's lots of different words from the thesaurus to show us synonyms for inspiration, just in case there were some new ones there. Now, your turn. If you could meet a celebrity who has most inspired you, who would it be and why? And can you explain your answer? Well, so there's a good quote there that says, don't let yesterday take up too much of today. What do you think that actually means? OK, moving on. So. The definition again of inspiration is a personal thing that excites or stimulates. And an example of inspiration perhaps is a documentary about Buddhism, moting someone to study about Buddhism. Now, I want you to look at the five people that are there. Can you find out who they are? Do you already know them already? So I want you finally to check for understanding that you've understood the word inspiration. I want you to think about the first question. When was the last time someone inspired you? The second one, who is the most inspirational person in your life? And can you think of a time when you inspired someone else? So I'd like you to explain your answers. You can write them into paragraphs or alternately you can speak to somebody in your family home about them. But also, like I said, try to find out who those five people are in front of you. OK, and finally now on to our recommended read. So this has been a GCSE text for many, many, many years. It's called Lord of the Flies by William Golding. So what I want you to think about is what do you think this novel might be about just from looking at the front cover? OK, so have a look at the colours there. Have a really good look at the images. What is the image meant to be? What is within the image? OK, so I want you to pause this clip now and I want you to write a couple of paragraphs about it. So again, looking at the colours, the pictures, the images, the style of the writing. What is it meant to represent? And then finally, the last part of today's session, we're going to look at this extract from the novel. So what else do you think the novel could be about and how does it engage the reader? So let's go for it and have a read of this extract. Over the island, the buildup of clouds continued. A steady current of heat, heated air rose all day from the mountain and was thrust 10,000 feet. Revolving masses of gas piled up until the air was ready to explode. It was early evening. The sun had gone and a brassy glare had taken the place of clear daylight. Even the air that pushed in from the sea was hot and held no refreshment. Colours drained from water and trees and pink surfaces of rock and the white and brown clouds brooded. Nothing moved. 
but the flies who blackened the pig's head and made the sp spilt guts look like a heap of glistening coal. Even when the vein broke in Simon's nose and the blood gushed out, the flies left him alone, preferring the pig's high flavour. With the running of the blood, Simon's fit passed into the weariness of sleep. He lay in the mat of creepers while the evening advanced and the thunder continued to rumble. At last, he woke and saw dimly the dark earth closed by his cheek. Still, he did not move but lay there, his face sideways on the earth, his eyes looking dully before him. Then he turned over wearily, drew his feet under him and got hold of the creepers to pull himself up. When the creepers shook, the flies exploded from the pig's guts with a vicious note and clamped back on again. Simon carefully got to his feet. The light was unearthly. The pig's head hung on its stick like a black ball. Simon spoke aloud to the clearing. What else is there to do? Nothing replied. Simon turned away from the open space and crawled through the creepers till he was in the dusk of the forest. He walked drearily between the trunks, his face empty of expression, and the blood was dry around his mouth and chin. A buffer of wind made him stagger and he saw that he was out in the open on rock under a brassy sky. He found his legs were weak and his tongue gave him pain all the time. When the re wind reached the mountain top, he could see something. A humped thing suddenly sat up and looked down at him. OK, ladies and gents, so it's quite an intriguing, quite a mature, quite a difficult piece of reading. However, what do you think the novel could be about and how does it engage the reader? Now, congratulations. I'm incredibly proud of all the hard work that you've done during this lockdown. Please, can you get this work back to us? Feel free to email it to us, to scan it in, to send pictures on your phone. And there will be prizes for the best work achieved. Well done.